Hello, my name is Ben Goldscheider and I'm a horn player and in this short video I'm going to explain to you how this piece of plumbing that we call the horn works. Now the first question to ask ourselves is how do we make a sound on this? And like with all wind instruments, the way that a sound is produced on this instrument is by uh, translating air into a vibration. So of course we need air, so we have to take in a slightly larger breath than normal, so roughly something like this. And then we have to make a buzz, and this buzz is formed by the embouchure. It's a setting of the lips that creates something like this. And then we have what's called a mouthpiece, which takes that buzz and transfers it into something that is able to travel through the horn and become sound. And essentially what the horn is, is an amplifier of this original buzz. So from this, we get this, and eventually... Now the reason we have the mouthpiece is that we cannot simply uh, create a buzz that works on this bit. If I try and make a sound, it doesn't work. So we need this extra mouthpiece. Now, I'm holding today a modern double horn, as we call it, but in the time of Mozart, Haydn, um, early Beethoven, the horns that you would have seen didn't have any of this plumbing in the middle. And as such, like any tube, hose pipe, toilet roll tube, it has a certain length and therefore a certain number of pitches that are available to it by nature. So you may have heard that this horn is a horn in F, and that's because when I don't press any of the valves, the length of tubing is as uh, such nine feet, which happens to be in the key of F. So I'm able to get the following notes. Now, as you will have heard, um, the notes at the bottom of that, what we call the harmonic series, are quite far apart. And when you get to the top of the range, they become much closer together. And so a lot of composers, when they were writing Mozart, the Baroque composers like Bach or Telemann, they were writing in this top register because that's where the notes were. And so if, let's say, the first movement of a symphony is in F, but the second movement is in D, what can the horn players do? And well, actually, in fact, what they did was take an extra piece of tubing, uh, for example, um, you know, an extra two or three feet, and that would quite literally change the length of the horn and enable them to play in a different key. Um, so what was once if they added in a longer piece of tubing, it would make the tube longer and therefore the sound lower. And what the modern horn has done is to put all the different lengths of tubing into here, basically. And when we press a valve, it transposes and sends the air down a different length of tubing. So an F horn, if I press the second um, valve, becomes an E horn, and you'll hear, instead of... It goes lower. And so on. Etc, etc. Now, what did the horn players do to get all of the notes in between these notes of the harmonic series? And that's where the right hand comes into play. And it's often a question I get asked, you know, why do you shove your right hand up the instrument? And aside from holding it, what's essential is that we could change the length of the tubing based on our hand position. So if we wanted to play a scale, we would quite literally have done something like this. And you'll hear that the timbre, the sound of the note changes. But what we are doing is merely shortening the tube for each note of the harmonic series and we're able to get the notes in between. And the modern horn eliminated that because instead of having to change our hand position, we merely have all of the correct tubings at our whim and the air changes, um, the notes change according to the vowels. So now we can play this. <laughs> Hopefully with a nice sound. Thank you very much and I hope you 
Enjoy the events this week with the horn and stay curious about this wonderful instrument. <laughs>